it is time. We're just going to give our technical advisor a moment to find us. All right, I think we're going to go ahead and get started um, and do at least the uh, preliminaries. Um, so thanks, everybody, for coming to the um, MOPS meeting at IETF 118. Um, and next slide, please. No, well, um, this is an IETF meeting. Um, it does have IETF meeting policies attached to it, um, so that by participating in this meeting and in the IETF, you are agreeing to follow IETF processes and policies. Um, and I think our scribe isn't back to this computer yet, is he? No, but we don't need him at this right. precise. Yep, just, I am detail disoriented. Um, sorry. Um, that was <laughs> So um, as for the usual uh, engagement in the IETF, uh, IETF work, um, please do acknowledge that any written audio, uh, video, and photographic records of meetings may be made public. Um, and uh, there are more informational documents available to you to understand all the details about the above, including um, our privacy policy. Next slide, please. Um, yeah. You probably already made sure, you know, cottoned on to most of these particular details, um, but do please sign in to the Medico client, even if you are here in the room for two reasons. One, because it will help us with a head count to know how big a room to ask for next time. Uh, and two, because we will be running the queue using Medeco because it makes it nice to make it an even, even playing field for both in-person and remote participants. Uh, speaking of remote participants, and I know that most of our remote participants are old hands at this, please make sure your audio and video are off unless you're presenting uh, during this session. Next slide, please. Um, yep, some more resources for the meeting week. Um, you probably already found the agenda, um, but there are also resources should you find you have technical issues, um, and here are some useful URLs. Great. Perfect timing, thank you. Um, so this is our agenda um, and our scribe volunteer has returned. Thank you very much to our scribe volunteer. No. <laughs> you know, you're, you're off the hook this time, go ahead. We didn't but think of it soon we, enough. We normally make the last person in the room go ahead. Uh, I don't prefer that you're not in the room. Go ahead and work your way through. That's not what I said. Try, try whichever meeting over there. Which is why I texted you Berlin 3 4. Mops, Mark. Yeah, you might check it in here. 
Anybody find a jacket in here like the one on that chair? I do not see one. Where are the headphones? What color is it? Black. Sorry. Alrighty then. Um, as I said earlier, uh, we will be using the Meet Echo queue for handling the, the mic line, so please do make sure you log in and use that queue mechanism. Um, so if our scribe is ready to go, thank you very much. No ticker. Yeah. Um, great, we'll get started then. Um, any bashes to this agenda? All right, not hearing any, uh, we'll move right along. Um, so the first item up is the um, an update on the media operations use case for extended reality applications on edge computing infrastructure. Renan, if you're ready, please go ahead and present. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, Rena, do you want me to run the slides or do you want to run the slides? Uh, yes, please, could you run the slides? All right. <clears throat> okay, so hi everyone, my name is uh, Renan and I will be presenting an update to our draft. Uh, this is a joint work with Akbar Rahman. Next slide, please. So we have added a new section six for security considerations. We'll talk about this addition in the next few slides. Next slide, please. We'd like to thank Stefan Wenger for shepherding this document. Um, in a communication, Stefan pointed out the need for a section discussing security considerations for the presented use case. So in the newly added section six, we briefly present the operational security considerations of our use case. A more detailed analysis of these considerations can be found in the references. So there are essentially two dimensions of the operational security. First of all is device related operational security issues. And second is the edge server related operational security issues. Next slide, please. In section 6.1, we discuss XR device related operational security issues. First of all, the devices themselves could be stolen or tampered with. And so the operator of the use case should not rely on the integrity of these devices. Secondly, the XR devices are already running computationally intensive tasks that drain battery power. And so the operator must carefully select an appropriate cryptographic system for communication that takes these issues into consideration. Finally, the operator must avoid deploying security protocols that rely on the XR devices being continuously connected to the edge server. Next slide, please. Uh, next, in section 6.2, we discuss edge server related operational security issues. The operational security considerations for edge server of the presented use case are similar to those for cloud data services. The US's National Institute of Standards and Technology details operational issues of security for such data centers. The edge servers in our use case run as a private cloud of the operator. So the operators will need to consider physical security of the servers, the disks, routers, cable, power, et cetera. Additionally, the XR software being deployed will need to be audited for software error categories, such as insecure interaction between components, things like SQL injection, risky resource management, and porous defenses. Finally, security maintenance of the XR system running on that servers will require monitoring and analyzing logging information, performing regular backups, recovering from security compromises, regular testing of system security, and using processes to patch and update all critical software, and to monitor and revise the configuration as needed. Next slide, please. So, so a couple uh, people have entered, sorry, Renan, a couple of people yeah. have entered the queue, and I don't know, are these questions that should be addressed at this time, Glenn's running to the mic, and so is Eric. So yes, if we can take a couple questions, Glenn. Sure. Uh, yeah, Glenn Dean. So um, those are good security things, but I do wonder if they are very broad and sort of 
maybe a little bit off topic for the main document. What I'm worried about is as we try to go final and send it up, I don't want to have the document held up because people are debating the security aspects of like managing server farms and edge compute resources and stuff like that. I mean, I don't know. I, it's a question I have when I, when I heard it, it's like, it's you know, none of it's wrong, but everyone's got an opinion on it and it might extend the document review, but it's not core to the document itself. So Glenn, what would you suggest? If you don't mind, Glenn, because I get a very similar thing. This is giving the responsibility for mobs. I think this section is going too far. Uh, we don't ask this to the, because you do augmented reality, describe what a summer farm is doing or whatever. I think what you need to put is only the difference between the usual streaming thing. When you are streaming normal video uh -huh. and when you are streaming augmented video. If you say there is no more security risk than um, normal streaming, I think this is correct what I say. I have to, to you, you are the authors, and it's yep. enough. Well, right now, we'll, maybe you can ask some okay. questions. There's a reason why I kept you, right? Perfect. Okay, Raynan, do you, do you um, have enough data to take that on board, or does anybody else have a different perspective? Yeah, I could uh, cut the section short and just say that the security issues are similar to what uh, other streaming applications face and leave it at that maybe. What does the working group think? And getting the two people who brought the point up are nodding. So it sounds like that would address their concerns. And I'm not seeing anybody disagreeing, looking around the room. Sounds good. OK. So we'll do the necessary update. So, OK. Did you have more that you wanted to cover, or? Uh, no, I think uh, uh, that was quite helpful. Um, I think the concern was about this section or, on how detailed it should be or it should not be. So I think that is clear. Um, besides this, uh, the rest of the issues are, I would say, more formal issues like uh, adding an INR section and uh, running it through IDNets. So uh, I think from our end, uh, we are satisfied with where it is now. The um, I, I think that's right. And and we had a note from Stefan Wenger as the uh, the document shepherd before this meeting, saying that he was satisfied with um, with the updates. Um, so I think that the next the next step is to shorten up shorten up the security consideration section, which you've just written. Um, Resubmit that, and then we can move it along. Um, we can move it along to submit it to the ISG in two weeks. Kyle is pretty yep. emphatic about it. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I saw Kyle's hand there. <laughs> so, <laughs> sure, uh, uh, we'll do. Thanks. Great. Thank you very much. Yep, so next up we have Lenny Giuliano with the other working group document. Great, thanks. Um, I've just uh, requested to share. Um, Should be going now. Got it. Okay, can you guys hear me okay? Yep, it's all good. Great. Um, so today I'm just going to present, uh, d describe uh, just um, updates on the draft. Uh, so from, we, we added uh, from, from versions one to two, and we discussed this in um, 117, uh, added a bunch, covered a bunch of areas that were previously brought up um, as kind of gaps and missing, uh, mostly layer four things. Um, so things like re reliability, um, available bit rate, authorization, encryption, those kinds of things. Um, w this architecture doesn't um, uh, create anything new. We just had pointers to existing work. Um, there's lots of work in, in the industry um, that, that addresses this. And uh, uh, this architecture is somewhat agnostic to it. Um, the since since 117 uh not much change uh we just fixed the typo um other than that uh we 
um, the, the, the next, based on feedback, um, you know, it seems to be stabilizing. Um, we, if, if there are folks who think that more should be added to it, um, we can look into that. Otherwise, um, we'd like to ask if, if it's ready for working group last call. <laughs> so, uh, anybody have thoughts for or against getting this ready for working, calling this ready for working group last call? Everybody thinks it's a grand idea to have us go for a working group last call. And we'll read it and send comments and support it. Um, I think I, I will use this moment to say as a bit of a public service announcement that one of the things that we always have a challenge with, and I don't think this is unique to the MOPS working group, is that uh, when we put working group, put documents to working group last call and then there's no discussion of it on the list, it doesn't say much to the, the document shepherd or the ISG about what, what, this, what this document is really worth. So a plea for comments to the list um, about the document um, when, we, when we put it out. Are we allowed to do hum? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I know we, we yeah. As opposed to the show of hands. Uh, yeah, it's a yes, no. Um, um, you know, everybody can turn on their mic and then hum too. I don't think that works. All right, so a hum, if you believe in the room, and then we will do the, then you'll be allowed to vote on your phone. And yeah, you can hum and vote differently. So anyway, hum. Do you believe the Treaty and document is ready for working group last call? Mm. It's pretty faint. Do you not think the document is ready for last call? Okay. Uh, would the would the person who thinks it's not ready care to share <laughs> what they think? Apparently not. All right. So, and while Eric is working his way to the mic, um, so I simply ahead, said it's not ready, but I don't mind if we go working group last call, of course, right? So I just my voice. Um, I still have to read it, right? So I couldn't have a sensible opinion on it. Okay. So that was more that was more of an abstain than a no. Yeah, but I mean. Well, yeah, yeah, be, so, somehow, yeah, you know. if you want to go there. Sure. <laughs> it's not ready until the agency says it. So the... Um, but just to repeat, we can do it working group last call, right? Yeah. Which is what Eric is saying. Uh, I will note a thing about the show of hands tool is that it defaults, to, when, when, I, when I launch a show of hands, it defaults to you having no opinion. Uh, so you have to move yourself out of no opinion. So. Um, since we've all logged into the tool, um, please do feel free to update your status of whether you think it is ready for last call, not ready for last call, or leave yourself with no opinion if you really have no opinion. Alrighty. And I... I think we will close the close the vote in fifteen seconds. If only I had something that counted down seconds. Thank you. Thank you for believing that had tune. Um, all right, terminating. So there was another no besides Eric in that vote. If anybody would care to share their perspective on 
why they don't think it's ready for working group last call, I'd be happy to hear. Put your hand up and put yourself in the queue, please. Again, apparently people don't want to share today. They want to keep their opinions to themselves. All right. Long and the short of it is, I think that really is enough support to at least launch the process of working group last call. So um, I think that's good news. Thank you, Lenny. Um, unable to attend today because he is involved in the NOMCOM is Chris Lemons, who has volunteered to be the document shepherd. So. Uh, We're not just saying that. <laughs> Um, yep, so we will we will move ahead with that. Great. Thank you very much, Lenny. Thank you. I, yeah. Hi there. So Glenn Dean and Comcast NBC Universal. Uh, you know, one of the things we do in MOPS is we provide connection to what's going on in the industry. Uh, usually I give an SVTA update, but Jason uh, Thibodeau from SVTA's the executive director, he's here this week, so he's going to do the update. I am going to talk about a very quick event that we held yesterday here as a side event at the ITF um, hotel but it was not an ITF meeting. It's something called Yana, you're not alone. We did one back in 2018. And what it is, is, and I think we advertise it to this group if you're on the mailing list. Ahead of time, people come together, let's talk about video and, and build a community. This would be awesome if this worked. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the problem with, I did this last time too. I can't do two things at once because if we get yeah. focused on- Or, or just it. next slide, or next slide. <laughs> no, 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 go ahead, go ahead. All right. Uh, we did this back in 2018, uh, just ahead of the ITF London meeting, if you remember. Uh, Yana, if you want to understand, the idea is not a PowerPoint thing, but we did presentations, but it's also bringing people together to talk extensively. We're trying to recreate the best hallway conversation experience you've ever had and build a community. And we talked about how uh, back in the day, video was really simple. You just had a few things that connected. And then life got really complicated. You got lots and lots of standards you have to deal with. And so a lot of stuff we talked about was the different uh, standards and different aspects of things we need to look at in the ecosystem. And this is back in 1994. If you want more information, there's a, a website with a report from the, 20, uh, the 2018 meeting. Uh, and there's going to be a report come out of the meeting we had yesterday. It will be circulated to the attendees. But I think if the chairs will allow us, we'll also post a copy or pointer on the MOPS list so people can go read it themselves. Uh, and that's it, Yama, the Prog Edition. And we had four talks. Uh, Guillaume talked about secure access and delegated streaming. Uh, Lenny talked about TreeDN, so, you know, connection. Uh, Ravid Hadar talked about a quick POC with some interesting quick data uh, that was coming out of the SVTA. Uh, and, and it will ultimately be published and, and allow us to understand the impact of quick uh, for streaming, what you need to consider. And finally, Will Law came and talked to us about a bunch of interesting stuff, including some CMCD work and where it should be uh, advanced. And uh, there will be an after report published. It'll be published on this website, yana1123.org. Uh, and we'll give people a heads up when it comes out. And that's it. Thank you. Any questions or comments? And if you didn't come, you missed out on some good food and beer because we had food and beer. And we had lovely people. Thank you, Glenn. JT? Hey, JT, Executive Director of Streaming Video Technology Alliance. Hi, way over there. <laughs> um, like Glenn said, uh, I'm going to do a quick update here on SVTA stuff that's relevant to ITF. Uh, so really quickly, just some general updates. Um, we actually announced a new streaming audio study group, uh, which is something that's a little bit been outside of our purview, but we've been asked for quite a bit. And we have some audio members like Sirius XM and Dolby. Um, we elevated our players and playback groups, or one of our chairs right, right there, Ali Began. He was very excited that they'd gone from a study group to a working group, so now they're official. Um, uh, we launched our segments, our one-day public conferences here. That went really great. Uh, we're doing it again next year uh, with Mile High Video on February 14th. So if you're interested, go submit a paper. And it's actually very relevant to this group. It's operationally focused presentations. 
like I had a problem, here's how I tried to solve it, and here were the results. Um, Common Media Library, so we launched our first public repo, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, you should go take a look at that project, go take a look at that repo. Um, the idea was uh, brought out by Paramount, who expressed a concern about having to manage fixing functions across different versions of different JS players out in the wild uh, when they had an issue. And so they just said, oh, this is crazy. Everyone's implementing it differently. So the Common Media Library, a bunch of functions across JS players that the JS players like Shaka and HLS can implement. You. I was getting to that. No, you do not. Yes, it's our first public repo. So all you have to do is agree to the DCO, which is pretty standard fare for uh, for public repos, and then you can contribute. So you can fork and clone and uh, and, and make recommendations. We're uh, running under uh, Benevolent Dictator for Life. So it's managed by the SVTA working group, which is players and playback. Uh, but we do have project leads who are active um, in the project. So Casey, and I can never pronounce his name correctly, Casey O from Paramount, um, he is running uh, point on the project. So if you have any questions, just go through GitHub and, and ping him. Uh, we publish some really good open caching performance data. So if you haven't heard of open caching, it's really cool. Go take a look at it. It's great democratized delivery across heterogeneous delivery networks. Yes, very scientific sounding for a group like this. Um, but we publish performance data uh, from Verizon. So Verizon exposed real world performance data of their open caching edges uh, against traditional CDN delivery and showed some significant performance improvements. So that was really cool. Uh, we launched a university, an online university. If you're interested in taking some classes, we launched with Streaming Advertising 101, kind of a primer on streaming advertising and the stack. Uh, we also launched CMCD 101, so that's a kind of like a hands-on implementation, and we've got lots of planned courses coming out throughout the year. Uh, we launched a streaming video wiki this year. That's right, we're trying to organize all of the content around streaming video in one spot, so you can just go and search and find, and all of that is generated by collaborative work from within the SVTA working groups. So the privacy and protection group is elevating and working on security topics, open caching on networking, networking and transport on protocol and networking. So all of this stuff bubbles up. So it's not a, we decide what the definition of things are is that we reach consensus from the industry. Uh, and then lastly, we launched a document numbering system. So you can now refer to our documents by SVTA and a number, which makes it so much easier when you're trying to reference something instead it's like a 12 word document title, it's just, no, that's SVTA 1012. Uh, anyway, so all of our documents on our website have been numbered and now they're available uh, and quick and easy to find. Uh, cool thing is you might already be a member and there's a bunch of people in here who already are. Uh, yeah, if you're uh, part of one of our member companies, you're entitled to come and sign up uh, on Arrow, which is our intranet. So that's run by AMSL or AMS, apologies. Uh, and then you can join working groups, join mailing lists uh, and get involved. Uh, and really quickly, our technical groups, I won't walk you through all these. We have 11 now with the streaming audio study group. Uh, and really quickly, the difference between a study group and a working group for us is study groups last for about a year. Uh, they try to figure out if there's a technical issue to solve. Uh, and if there is, then they start working on it and we elevate them to a working group. So, uh, But we have a lot of groups that people can go and get involved in. There's a whole lot of projects that are going on and we'll kind of talk a little bit about those. Um, yeah. Uh, again, we'll go through these. You can look at, look at the slides, uh, just grab them off the data tracker. There's a whole lot of documents that, um, that we published and are in draft this year. So we've got a lot of work that's ongoing. And there's one in here, I put various for numbers. Uh, that's the configuration interface documents. I think there's 18 that are in the set. And they really define how to interface programmatically with elements of a network that need or require configuration like CDN. So how do I send configuration information to that? Um, obviously that builds a lot upon CDNI and a lot of those have become RFCs and have been contributed to this, the CDNI working group. And then interesting projects. I wanted to show some projects that have crossover with IETF. Um, so you'll see here again, just grab this from the data tracker, but you'll see projects that are related directly to CDNI's work. Uh, and so Sanjay, who um, is one of the co-chairs of the CDNI working group, works a lot in our open caching group. And then we have a lot of folks uh, that are 
in the SVTA and here uh, work with, within CDNI. So, but there's also some stuff that's MOPS related. So again, like the common media library, um, you know, measuring latency and ABR streaming. So again, operationally focused concerns and issues and, and things that we're trying to do. And then we do have some quick projects. So doing a POC uh, on quick and HTTP three, just kind of understanding, you know, what the performance looks like in real world test scenarios. And that's something Glenn mentioned that uh, Ravid showed yesterday at Yana, which was, which was really cool. Um, and then, you know, we do actually have some AR, VR, XR stuff uh, that we have been looking at as well. So it was interesting to see that paper uh, that was just talked about and how we might have better coordination between the two groups on stuff like that. Go forward. And that's it. Thank you very much. Any comments, questions, suggestions for JT? I need a Jeopardy like theme song, please. Like Perfect. I feel so left out. No questions? Perfect. All right. Thank you very much. Um, so that brings us to the end of our formal agenda. Um, I do have a question. I'm going to launch it in the show of hands tool. Um, just trying to get a sense of how many people who are participating today are planning to be at IATF 119 in Brisbane. And you can count that as, um, I'm thinking mostly in person, but we can take it as in person or virtual. And no opinion if you're not sure yet. All right, I think this is settling out. Part of the reason why I wanted to ask that was because um, if, if you've been doing the math and counting on your fingers, you'll realize that we have one document that's about to go off to the ISG and another document that's about to enter working group last call. Um, so the natural thing is to be starting to look at new work and new things that we should be doing in MOPS. That may be a little challenging in, in the context of IETF 119 if people who are engaged in the work now are not gonna be engaged in the working group session then. So we'll have to rely on our mailing list because that works well. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so um, I think that's something for the working group to think about. Um, and since we aren't actually about to get booted out of this room, I'm certainly open to hearing any thoughts on what are next things that we should be thinking about tackling in this working group. Um, even as sort of free-flying ideas at this point. I, I would appreciate using the Q tool, but the floor is open. Ali, you look like you're trying to get in Q. <laughs> Damn it. All right. Yeah, Eric won this time. So Eric Vink again. Just remind the working group that you don't need a draft really to present here. It's better if you have a draft, but we are also in ops, right? Warren is there for a good reason. So explaining a good experience about media operation is also excellent here. Thank you for that, Eric. Yeah, so I, I, I can say I've got one draft I'm work, I'm starting to socialize getting co-authors on. Uh, Operationally, uh, a lot of CDN peoples and networks have identified that potentially we have an issue with mask uh, because, and, and it's a VPN related problem, but mask, you know, it's being, it's the new cool kid on the block. The problem is that we have uh, clients that are on an access network that it potentially have access to a very fast on, um, on the same access network cache. Uh, and they're being redirected uh, because of the privacy flows uh, up into potentially a cache on the open internet, which may be a less optimal cache to access their content from. And so uh, there's been some discussion for us to find the problem. So if people want to help to write that draft, contact me, we'll, we'll write that draft to define the problem and then talk about some solutions. I've got one idea I've pitched around, which is, is there a means by which uh, the service, because you know both caches being talked to, 
uh, the open internet cache and the on access network cache probably are run by the same service, uh, the same video provider. Could they provide a hint that goes back to the client and then the client can make a, a decision different if it chooses to? I don't know. There's a lot of different ways to slice that cat um, and, and to talk about it. But uh, step one is if anybody's interested in helping me write that draft uh, to define the problem, Glenn Dean, uh, Glenn underscore Dean at Comcast.com, drop me a note and you can be a co-author or at least a contributor if you don't want your name on that thing. Thanks. Thank you. And and again, thanks, Eric, for the reminder that it doesn't have to be a, a, even a draft plan. Um, I think the... I think it would be excellent, Glenn, if you could share a brief description of that on the mailing list, because I think what we probably have to do between now and the end of the year is really start reminding everybody that having ideas of things that we're going to be digging into in uh, in IETF 119 um, will be helpful. Ben is going back to the microphone. Well, this way, so if anybody's remote, they can hear me. Um, so yeah, I think maybe the path for the list uh, is maybe I'll do a first really rough draft, put it up there. That way people will get an idea of where it's going. Uh, and also sometimes when you see things, you kind of go, oh, he got it wrong. I'm an engineer, I've got to correct that. And that's a great motivation. You know, people have FOMO, engineers have fear of not correcting somebody else that got it wrong. Great. Thanks. Uh, any other thoughts that people would care to share? Shall we declare victory? All right, going once, going twice. Thank you, everyone. And again, thank you to our note taker. It's a really terrible time of year for me to travel, so it's like I need to spend my money. That and I do not want to go back to the street. Like, I'd love to go back to the But yeah, um, you wake up two in the morning or whatever on the inbox. And hopefully, hopefully, my mother will die. There was something that I was looking at, and it's like I realized that I had been for six months since I'd gotten into this problem. Yeah. 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 Yeah.